start with MVC. Okay, you know about MVC, right? Model view controller. What is what is model view controller? What is it actually? It's an architecture or it's a design pattern. It's an architectural design pattern, right? MVC is an architectural design pattern for building which applications. Hmm? For any any applications, like it can be any enterprise application, or it can be any web application, or it can be any standalone application. <coughs> this MVC is the standard architecture. How many MVCs we have? Three? Two MVCs? Two or three? So just we have uh, two MVC standard architectures. One is MVC and one is MVC two. What is the difference between both? Actually, in case of MVC, application need to divide into three layers. Presentation part, controller, model. Application will divide into three layers. Presentation, controller and model. This is what actually MVC, right? This is what actually standard MVC architecture. We have to write a presentation related things here and controller operations have to write here and our model business operations have to write here as per MVC. And MVC 2? In case of MVC 2, again model part will divide into three sub parts. Again, three sub layers. One business, and one is DAO, and one is <coughs> service. <coughs> For your enterprise application, if you want to write a separate business classes and database operations, if you want to write separately, instead of combining business code and database code together, if you want to write business operations in a separate class and database operations, if you want to write in separate class, then you have to divide model part into two parts, business and DAO. And your business required services you can provide by using services. Okay. So this one is actual standard architecture, standard MVC. MVC2 is the recommended architecture for making any enterprise applications. For making enterprise applications for making enterprise applications. This MVC2 is the standard one. Enterprise means business. Enterprise means business applications. So, your banking applications and e-commerce applications and all these are type of business applications only, right? So, a banking application will come under enterprise and e-commerce applications. E-commerce and healthcare healthcare applications so on we have multiple multiple types of domains right so it can be a healthcare or banking or e-commerce okay sports sports application okay there are multiple types of enterprise uh, domains like a banking applications e-commerce healthcare domain and some applications belongs to sports sports applications Star cricket application. Have you seen? Have you watched? It's today. <coughs> Star cricket. There they are providing web services support also. In that one. And Star uh, Star Sports one uh, app also they released. Star Sports um, mobile app. Okay. So like how you are watching in like a web browser. In the same way you can watch through your mobile also, right? So they given that support for that Star Sports application. Web services support they given. Okay, so from server actually how Star Sports browsers they are accessing application from mobile apps also we are accessing it, right? Mobile scores, updates, we used to get all the things. So sports applications also will come under enterprise. It will come under enterprise only. So for building enterprise applications, this MVC2 is the standard one, standard architecture. So as per this MVC2, in this view part, we need to write presentation code here. So to write a presentation code, here it is only for view. So here that view you can design by using HTML. 
and you can use here HTML5 and here we can use JSPs and we can use custom tags or predefined tags tag support also you can take here for creating presentations and here non related java things like jsp and custom tags are belongs to java and html let's say some scripting language right and here adobe adobe flex for flash applications for graphics applications adobe flex we can use here and if you required any validation support client side validations validations for providing validation support we can use javascript or else we can use ext.js framework ext.js and here you can use jquery ajax for ajax for what <coughs> asynchronous java calls right asynchronous java calls and here you can go through any frameworks like ext.js jquery we have many frameworks right node.js angular.js it's become more popular bootstrap all these are what client side frameworks right javascript frameworks all these are javascript frameworks so by using this javascript frameworks we can provide some validations and some event handlings also we can do dynamic event handlings we can do here and if you want to apply any styles for designing forms we can use this and to provide styles for styles we can use here css only css huh? okay css simple css css3 anything else jquery we can use jquery also it is javascript framework right so to provide styles we can use jquery also here okay presentation part we can design by using this type of scripting languages or by using jquery frameworks or by using simple cascade style sheets okay then coming to this controller part controller responsibility is what here presentation need to provide presentation support and style support and client side validation support and all this coming to this controller part controller need to have capability to read data which is coming from presentation part and finally it need to have capability to send output okay it need to read data finally it need to send output so under controller part what we can use in this controller part we can we can use servlets and jsp and filter anything else tag support also you can take here by using tags also we can read right read and write operations by using tags also you can do so you can do read operations write operations by using this tags also so under controller part to read the data which is coming from presentation part and to send output to the presentation part under controller part you can go through servlets jsps filters or else you can take tag support also here okay anything else here yes. what yes. only four right only four components we have and coming to this model part model again divided into three sub parts right one service one business and one dao so for business what we have to use here and for dao what we have to use here uh, just let's start from dao part dao just dao main thing dao we need to use for doing database CRUD operations okay the main main things what we have to do from dao database CRUD operations we have to do here to do database CRUD operations what we required here jdbc is enough and hibernate anything else we can go through java persistence api and we have ibatics right ibatics and anything else many ORM frameworks we have these all are ORMs right these all are ORM tools ORM tools but this one is simple plain API 
JDB is capable. It is not a ORM. It is a data centric tool. It is not object centric tool. Okay. So, you have to do just database operations. Database queries only you have to write here. It is not similar like ORMs, right? <coughs> and before, yeah, after JDBC, yeah, before Hibernate, we have one tool here. One more tool we have. One more framework, I mean, one more service we have here. EJB Entity Beans. Actually, EJB Entity Bean team developer, Gavin King, he only designed this ORM, Hibernate ORM. Okay? They find many problems in this EJB Entity Beans. Then he invented Hibernate. Okay. So, by using EJB Entity Beans also, you can do ORM operations. EJB Entity Bean also is a type of ORM. So, you know the comparisons between JDBC and ORM tools, right? If it is a JDBC, there are many problems in JDBC, right? For enterprise application, JDBC is not suitable. Why not suitable? JDBC queries are database centric queries. So, in future, if you want to move from one database to another database, you have to change that query style. Yes, right. Like an Oracle database, if you are running JDBC queries. In future, if you want to move it to MySQL, if there is any syntax, like syntax changes in between Oracle engine to MySQL engine, there you need to make the changes. So, JDBC SQL operations are database centric operations. In future, if you want to move from one database to another database, just you have to change queries. So, even Java is platform independent, right? Platform independent. But if you write your Java DAO class by using JDBC, your class will become database dependent. So, JDBC main disadvantage here, the disadvantages with this main JDBC, the main disadvantages here, database will become database dependent database dependent and one more thing catchy support not there here catchy support catchy support not there right there is no catchy support no catchy support by using catchy what we can achieve for enterprise applications why catchy required it will improve performance and It will reduce the number of database calls first. So, database calls, if you reduce, then you can save a lot of time. Java execution is more faster than database execution, right? So, every time if you try to retrieve data from database, if you try to retrieve every time data from database, let's say if you are a star sport application, star sports, right? Whenever you try to retrieve cricketers list, if you want to know Indian cricketers list, you, I mean, and Pakistan cricketers list, Cricketers list if you want to see. And if you have cricketers list to table, let's say here if you have cricketers table, one Indian cricketers table, Indian team, and if you have Pak team, how many teams we have? Total? Eight teams, right? Eight or any, uh, more than eight? Huh? Eight Only eight teams, right? So in eight teams, table data is constant data, right? Will it change frequently? No, no. Team data will be constant. So, if you have 8 tables, in, an, in that 8 tables, if you have constant data, if you have constant data in your 8 tables, from here, if users, end users, like us, when I want to see Indian team cricketers, whenever I try to pass request for, from my presentation, it will call controller, controller will call business, business will call DAO, DAO need to retrieve information from Indian table, from here it need to fetch that 16 people or 18 people, that 18 cricketers list it need to return to DAO, that DAO again it need to return to us, right. So like me, here 1 lakh users if they try to request, 1 lakh users if they try to request for same team India information. On this 8 tables again 1 lakh, 1 lakh users if they try to hit. 8 into 1 lakh, 8 lakhs hits, you may need to apply on your database. If it is a constant data, why I should hit 8 lakhs times here? Unnecessary performance issue, right? So, instead of doing 8 lakhs hits, hits on this database, you just retrieve this data only one time, keep the data into catchy here. Maintain catch is here, in that catchy, keep that 8 tables data. 
keep your eight tables data here then whenever user requires the team's information instead of fetching from database tables you can fetch the data from catches then you can improve your application performance and you can reduce the number of database calls how many calls you can reduce up to 7 lakhs 99,099 calls you can reduce one single call is enough one single database connection is enough so catchy support why required for enterprise applications to improve your application performance must you need to provide catchy support but that support we don't have in JDBC right in ORM tools we have in EJB also we have that support EJB will provide that catchy support Hibernate will provide that catchy support and all these warrants JPI, Ibatics and all these will provide right so catchy support is required for enterprise application and in case of warrant tools queries are not database dependent queries right yeah. actual CRUD operations we need to do by using save method, update method, delete methods in that save or update or delete we need to pass a object right so we are not writing any queries directly whenever you require data from table there again we have methods like get method load method and the HQL methods we have in case if there is any case to query that queries you can write by using HQL right here in hibernate we have HQL by using this HQL if I write query that query you can run on any database right HQL queries are database independent queries right those are not SQLs HQL queries are object oriented queries and that object queries are database independent queries and if you see EJB, in EJB also we have query language that query language is also database independent language and in JPA, in JPA is there any JPA language, JQL here also we have query language ok, JPA is advanced than EJB ok, Sun only designed this JPA right after EJB, Sun given this JPA. But what about this Hibernate? It's a third party tool. Given by whom? Developer name? His name Gavin King. Gavin King. And the organization? Now it is from? Hibernate releases are from JBoss, right? JBoss and Red Hat. 